That was uh, LL Cool J, Round the Way Girl. One of the things I would say in response to people who are saying, who are saying to move on, um, the, the, it's interesting that you would say this story is old, we should move on. You don't have to be here. It's like complaining about the food at a buffet. If you don't like a meal, move on to something else. But this is kind of, and the reason why stories continue is because people are interested in them. And, and not to belabor the point, but I think that there's some very important things to be gleaned from this. What happened Saturday was a clear example of what happens when a black man's trauma meets another black man's trauma at the same time. Now, of course, I, I said this yesterday, uh, the nation has been mesmerized and interested in and, and, and overanalyzing what has happened to lead Will to this point because it's so out of character for him. So out of character for him. He, you know, he would never act like that for 30 years. And I agree. I've known Will a long time. I was worn up for a long time. I've seen him grow and expand. So we were wondering what happened when a man who's so put together, a man who has it all, a man who's having the best night of his life uh, professionally, uh, why was he snapped like that? But on the other side of that is a man in Chris Rock, an, an A-list guy, a guy who was one of the finest comics who have ever lived. Uh, but we don't know his story. Like Chris Rock was a dude who was beat up every day, every day. Like I won't say every day because that's a hyperbolic, but often he found himself on the ends of somebody who didn't like him for whatever reason and beat him up. One of those ass whoopings resulted in him being in the hospital for a couple of weeks. Uh, also, when he was on uh, uh, he was on uh, Saturday Night Live, he was beaten and robbed. So the fear of being physically accosted has been so entrenched in him that he had to seek treatment for it. He sought, like many of us have to, for whatever traumas are in our life, or should, whenever there are many traumas in our life, he had to seek help, like mental, uh, mental counseling. Somebody had to help him work through it. And one of the things that happened in the process of them helping him work through this trauma is the idea that it may not happen again. But it did in front of the world. Because Will's trauma met Chris Rock's trauma. Let's suffice it to say that whether people like to believe this or not, unfortunately, black men and black people period, but black men in particular, have all been damaged in some way. And it is bad when my damage meets your damage. When my damage meets your damage, it doesn't matter if the world is watching. When my damage meets your damage, it doesn't matter if there are cameras everywhere. When my damage meets your damage, it is a bad thing. And we must assume this. There is uh, a story. There was a DC-9. It was an airplane. It was a marvel of engineering. This DC-9 was constructed, and it had a, a plane crash. I, I'm not sure if it was in Ohio or Washington. But what they found when they deconstructed this DC-9, what there was a grain of sand that was embedded in the match. It was a manufacturing flaw. It was embedded in the rotor of the, uh, 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 of the uh, plane. It was embed embedded in the rotor. So the plane would take off and land, take off, and land, take off, and land, and it, there would never be a problem. But the whole time, that grain of sand, that manufacturing flaw, was rupturing that rudder. It was splitting it, it was opening it up. One day, the plant takes off, and for no explained re uh, uh, reason, the rupture shifts in halves, cuts the hydraulics, the plane crashes. That is black men. And that is what happens when black trauma meets black trauma. It doesn't matter if you're in the air. It doesn't matter if you're at the Oscars. It doesn't matter if you're in the alley. It doesn't matter if you're in the school. That is what happens. And what that was, requires is us for all, to, all of us to understand that we are all damaged in some way. That in some way, despite our best intentions, there is a flaw in our manufacturing. And what that requires us to have is a certain amount of grace. It is not that you let people run over you. It is not that you let people destroy you, but you understand that they have a grain of sand in, your, in their rotor just like you do. That just like you do. That there was a flaw in their manufacturing just like yours. And maybe that'll help us understand when trauma meets trauma, when black trauma meets black trauma, it doesn't matter what else is around. And what that requires from us to understand whether it's me and Kanye or Will and, 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 and Chris or this dude and that dude, it requires of us understanding that all of us, all of us have some grain of sand in our rotors that one day will rupture.
one day for one, whatever explained reason. And that requires us understanding that all of us are entitled to a little bit of grace from one to another. Now, I'm not no Bible thumper. I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to change tomorrow, but I will try to do my best to understand that all of us have a little sand in our rotor that can rupture at any time, and that definitely requires grace. That's a little note from the GED section. We've got the Jazz Report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hewitt here.